believe us, there are people who've got hundreds of thousands of followers who can't get a client. Okay, now I'm an online coach. What content do online coaches make? Canva templates. Oh, I downloaded this hundred pack of Canva templates. Great, so did another thousand coaches and now you all look the same. We would always tell the people that we work with, don't copy or even to some degree take inspiration from other people's content. I better just get it out. That'll do. Will it though? There's three things that somebody needs to sign up with you um, to, to pay you cash. The first thing is- Shitloads of cash. In this video, we are going to talk to you about the five common mistakes that coaches make with their Instagram. Hey guys, we are Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in nearly any way we can. Nearly tripped. I nearly tripped up on the word here. Yeah. I got it here just in there in time, yeah. I think. Like that, wasn't it? And yeah, today we're going to talk about five mistakes that coaches make with their Instagram. Um, I mean, they make loads more than five. Yeah, um, but, this is just five. But, but these are the five that we look at when we land on someone's page. So like when we're on a consultation call, you know, for our one-to-one coaching or something like that, I'll often bring up their Instagram and I'll talk them through, talk me through what you're doing right now. And these are the sort of the five mistakes that we see a lot on those people that are coming in and need our help that we kind of fix quite quickly and all of a sudden can just change how things look a little bit on their on their Instagram. So we're going to we're gonna run through those. I'm just going to open up my phone just so I can have them there um, to remember because there's more than five and we know them all, of course, but we need to know which five we're going to talk to you about. Yeah. What's the first one? First one is no titles on any of their videos, any of their pictures, any of their stuff. I'm not seeing these one every single one, but yeah, no titles um, or hooks, shall we say. So one of the things that I get with coaches is that they uh, they obviously post their video for their home feed, right? And you know, when people are scrolling through and obviously you need a good hook in terms of the actual video and what they're going to say which is the first, say, three to five seconds. It needs to be compelling, needs to be interesting, different, unique, uh, not just waving around five pounds of fat in someone's face. It's been and done. Um, it worked for a little bit. But the other thing that I say to them is that if I was to land on your profile, I cannot tell what any of those videos are about. So there's an element of this where people go, oh, I'm not really getting any followers in. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, they didn't know what they're following. Like if I land on your page and I just see six videos of talking heads, but there's no explanation as to what the video is, I'm not going to go into it and look at it because there's nothing that's drawn me into that video. Um, so if you'll see on ours, because we we do this, we do this quite well. I don't think you'll be able to see it. I'm sure that someone will put a, a little uh, a little thing in the um, on the video. But you'll see on our profiles is that there's always a little caption. There's always a little title on one of the videos so you can see what it's about. So if you were interested in that topic, you would click on the video and you'd watch it rather than just our ugly faces like that going, you're not going to open that video, right? Think of it like Netflix. Imagine you open your Netflix and rather than the cover image with the title of the film or series, instead it's just a still from the film or the series. You wouldn't you wouldn't know what film or, or TV show it is. You wouldn't know what it's about. You like so you're probably less likely to watch it just off a hunch of just one still. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the same thing. So it, it, it's basically to make your content slightly more library formatted. So that, like Dan said, if somebody is fresh to your page, that when they land on, that they might pick out the ones that kind of take the fancy, for example. So I would do that. So we follow um, an account called Four Brothers. And it's the same thing. Like every so often I might jump onto their page and then I'll pick out the titles that I mm -hmm. think might be funny. It's that. Whereas if they didn't have the titles, I've just got a feeling I'd be less inclined to go and yeah. to, to to go and watch them. Um, so it's exactly the same thing. And then that title needs to make them want to watch the video. So what I'll see a lot of coaches do is they'll make it like statement based. So for example, let's say you're doing a video about sweeteners. The title that they use is "Sweeteners Won't Kill You." Okay, cool. So I don't need to watch the video then because it, it's just a statement. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you've done what the video already said, so what's the point watching the video? So you need to make it something that lends itself to watching the video to find the answers out. Like- Our sweetness uh, slowly killing you. Yeah, there you go. You'd probably watch that if you were a little bit like, oh, don't Literally know, like, that one tweak. And I wouldn't even say, are they killing you because it's too extreme. Again, even the word slowly in there, it makes it seem as if like, well, maybe- It's more specific. Like it's just thinking like that. And it's just, and and we're going to talk about a little bit about personality in a second as well, because that's one thing. But is is it that even by doing that, it enables you to put your personality across sometimes well within these hooks, within these titles. You can start to put in little examples. Like I know people that have used like Married at First Sight, for example, and they use that in a, you know um, or Love Island. They've used those sorts of things within their within their their titles, within their sort of like hooks there. And again, it just gives people an idea of what 
TV shows you watch. Because if I, I couldn't put on any of my titles, for example, something around like trusting influencers uh, more than you trust someone on Love Island, it wouldn't make any sense because I don't know um, anything about Love Island. Right? I do. But if Mike did, <laughs> it would make more sense for him to do that, right? And you would know then when you sign up with Mike that you can talk about Love Island because he loves it and it's all he ever fucking talks about. Whereas I wouldn't ever talk about it, right? Mine might be more golf-based, for example, right? But like Mike, Mike's correct in that sense of like, I've had it from clients before where they said, oh, I've had a new follower and they just messaged me this. They just said they've been watched loads, binged watched loads of my content. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you've set up correctly. They will do because they found you, they liked one of your videos. They're now on your page. And now they're going through all the others. If you didn't have those titles, that I just don't think that would happen. I just don't think it would happen um, anywhere near the same level it does. So it's really important that you think of it, as Mike just said, that, as that Netflix, as that thing. How are you standing out? How are you drawing people in with that? Not the trailer as such, because it's not really a trailer, but that little bit of like information, a little bit of a hook to go, this is what is, you need to, to watch this because it's about this topic that you struggle with. And again, they should all be niche specific. So like Mike said about the sweeteners, it's specific to an audience of people who are interested in that. Again, there's loads of stuff you can do around Weight Watchers, Slimming World, Bodybuilding, uh, photo shoots. There's loads of stuff you can do about mind fleeting around that. It depends on your niche and what you want to focus on. There's loads and loads of things you should do. But I should know from reading those titles a little bit more about you as a coach, even if I don't even read your profile. I should know your roughly your niche from those titles, I think. Yeah, 100%. So like, if you look at what the, the style of video that we do, and we're probably going to touch on a, a topic of, of this as well in terms of variety. But for example, you'll see us do spoof videos. I would hazard a guess that if somebody likes one of our spoof videos, they might then scroll through the rest of our spoof videos that are titled spoof and look for those style videos because that's what they're finding funny or that's the content that they've just consumed that they like. Again, probably similarly to um, YouTube channels where they might have, um, what's the what's the phrase? Um, Pattern interrupt. No. no. On, on YouTube channels where you've got, for example, Days in the Life, Food Challenges. What, uh, what are they segmented into? I can't remember what it's called now. It's they're segmented gone. into... Sections. <laughs> yeah, what is it? <laughs> channels, not channels, is it? Like no. Playlists. Playlists. That's it. Playlist, that's the word. Playlist. So like, for example, you might get caught down a rabbit hole of watching somebody's entire back catalogue of food challenges, for mm -hmm. example, or spoof videos, or days in the life, or informative content. It's, a, it's exactly the same principle that if you're making it kind of clear what it is, and especially if you're looking at different varieties of certain things, again, for example, I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use Max Silver as an example, an ex-client of mine who does like a an office an office guy, like the the dickhead in the office that's into like gym or whatever, like office gym guy. Again, if I don't know whether Mark, Max does this, and to be fair, it, it's quite clear that it's a, an office gym guy video just by how he looks on the video, like he wears shades and stuff. But if he had like office gym guy does this in the title, people that found one of these videos that likes off his gym guy they might go through that one and then they might scroll back through and six videos ago there's another one and click on that one and then three videos ago there's this one mm -hmm. because they know what it is and they know what they're signing up to whereas if you didn't have a title on it it might be a little bit more difficult to understand okay what it is so it makes it less likely that they're going to go through your content and watch one after the other and this is, lends itself to the next point of like not enough variety within your content because I think it's relevant to this point as well in terms of the titles and the types of video people like to come and watch in so let's say for example you just did office gym guy videos in that, in that scenario, just using Max as, as an example, right? Or if we just did spoof videos, let's just say we just did spoof videos and nothing else, right? People would find it funny and engaging, but they still get bored because it's the same type of comedy. It's the same thing, kind of like different topic maybe. I believe that they would just get bored. They watch those videos, they might follow you, you might get loads of followers in, but there's no real substance to anything else you're posting, right? Whereas if someone comes in and like Mike said, they watch all our spoof videos and they watch say the, last, the latest four or five, and oh my God, I really like this stuff. They then know, like, and trust us to a degree, or certainly know, like us. Let's say not trust, know, like us. They are then going to be more likely, if they're a coach and they're interested in building their business, to then look at one of our videos that is about building a business. Let's say they then find a video like this that we do, which is like, don't send cold DMs because they were told to send cold DMs. Our reason why you shouldn't send cold DMs. And they watch a six second video of us going, this is why we don't do it. This reason, this reason, it's boring. It's a load of shit. It doesn't work. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. And they go, that's actually a pretty good video. Like, I wonder what else they got. And then there's another one, um, why your client onboarding sucks. And they're sitting there thinking, oh, my client onboarding probably does suck a little bit, right? They might watch that one. Then they might start watching a YouTube video off the back of it. They might hit the email list. They might download the free guide. They might look at our client results then and go, actually, a week later, actually, these guys are getting good results. Like, fucking hell, they don't seem to miss. Flipping out, right? We don't. We don't miss. They, that wouldn't happen if we just posted spoof videos. 
that, that acceleration to that point of them going, oh, these guys know what they're doing, it wouldn't happen as quickly because it's we're not posting a variety of our content. Likewise, if we just posted results, we wouldn't have drawn them in with the spoof, with the funny stuff that makes them sit there and watch through it and almost binge watch through those titled videos because we title them in that way is that coaches don't have enough variety. I see a lot of coaches that grow really, really well on Instagram by posting funny videos. They swear a lot, they do. But then you go on the page, there's nothing, there's no substance to the rest of the page. So they just lose those people. They're not engaged in their stories. They're not engaged in anything else like that. So that's why the variety of your content is just as important. I get that it's really easy to post a spoof video. And go, oh my God, I've got 200, 300 likes, loads of views. I'll just do more of this. It's easy to just go for that dopamine hit but we see it time and time again with coaches that it doesn't lead to a better business until you've got that variety within your content as well. Yeah, but I usually kind of cover this in a certain way where I say that there's three things that somebody needs to sign up with you um, to, to pay you cash. The first thing is- loads of cash. Yeah, lo loads of cash. <laughs> Credit card. Um, that's Credit one card. thing, yeah. Clano, Clano account. Um, three things. The first one you can't really influence you can provide an argument, but you can't really influence. And the first thing is, is now the right time? So for some people, it just might not be the right time. They've got loads of stuff coming up. They've got a house move. Maybe they don't have the cash at the moment. That they're saving for mortgage, whatever it is, right? You can try to provide an argument. It's January. Stop being fat. You know, summer's coming. Don't be a whale. Like, whatever, right? Not those words, but, you know. Um, but the other two things you can influence. And I'm going to look at two scenarios of whether you have one of those things and not the other and show you that you can't have um, one or the other. It has to be both. So the next two things are, are they going to get me a result and do I like them? So if you look at this scenario where you go, are they going to get me a result? That's probably going to be done by social proof, maybe walking the walk to some degree and to some degree some of the information that you point out. Like how convinced are they that you're going to be able to get them a result? Now, let's just say somebody has a thousand client results, like Dan said, it's just all results, but there's actually nothing else on there other than results. You're going to lose that element of, do I like them? So granted, they might get some signups just based off the results, but that do they like them is probably going to be completely lacking. So you're going to get a portion of people that actually would just prefer to see who they're going to be working with, know, like, and trust, have common interests, feel comfortable paying them cash and sending sending them the, their update photos. So there's going to be a portion of people that don't get that. So it, like, like Dan said, if we just have all of our Instagram is just results without these videos, without the spoof videos, you, you might be inclined to go, well, I don't really know these guys and they're putting out loads of results, but how genuine is this? Like, what's their message? How do they get these results? Because you can't get that across in just, for example, for you guys, just a transformation picture. That's not going to happen. So then flip it the other way around and go, okay, so you're this coach who does all of these funny videos in the gym and you're waving the pounds of fat around and you're pouring the stuff in the cups and all this stuff, right? But there's no results on there. There's nothing actually on there that shows you walking the walk, that actually shows that you can do your job. You can put out lots of funny information and they might actually really like you. That's why they followed you and that's why, you've got a big, that's why some people have got a big following. They like you. But is there enough of the, that guy's going to get me a result in the direction that I want for them to pay their cash? I don't think so. And I think in that scenario, in six months' time, it's become a little bit repetitive. You start not watching, you might miss one video, you might miss three videos, and all of a sudden you've not watched a video from them in a week, two weeks, a month, and all of a sudden they become a, a little irrelevant. Me and Dan can certainly name... Um, creators that, that we have followed or still follow that in the beginning we would watch all of the videos and go, it's really funny. And then you start to see them a little bit less and a little bit less because you're actually a little bit desensitized. It's a similar type thing over and over. Again, like the guy in the glasses that plays the football, do you watch all of his stuff now? No. No. He did it in the beginning. So this guy, some some guy in the, don't have a go at the glasses, um, but, <laughs> but he wears glasses playing football. Dan used to send me his videos. He probably watched them more frequently in the beginning and then it's become more sparse and more sparse and then all of a sudden nothing. Yeah. That's what will happen when you're just making these quote unquote supposed to be funny videos. So make sure that there's an element of consistency. So the things that we would suggest, there's probably something that is maybe slightly more, more lighthearted or certainly personally branded. So it, wh whatever that is, sarcastic, um, ranty, wh whatever that is, then maybe something that could be perceived as slightly more valuable, but probably based on opinion as opposed to straight fact. Then, of course, you're going to need to show social proof and you can show that in various formats. So it can be a progress photo, a transformation photo, a client win, a video testimonial. You could even do a client case study with you talking through somebody's specific journey. Um, and then on top of that, 
you could probably run some carousel style stuff again to break up the page again similar things where it might be use a good hook um my clients lost nine pounds on average during january here's three things that we changed with all of them hook makes you want to read it and again you come to a page that's got enough stuff going on that are touching all of these different points that actually makes it more likely that at some stage that they're going to buy from you the problem that we have is sometimes we'll say do a carousel and all of a sudden you'll go onto a coach's page and they've made seven of them in a row and it just looks really blocky and it's just the same canva image there's no variety yeah and and i think this also leads on to things looking garbage as well we're going to talk about that in, in, in a second but the other thing i have to really hammer home to coaches when they come in is i kind of say to them okay you've come to me for help at this point we need to change it then. Like, I think coaches just want to retreat to their safety net of, oh, I posted a nice picture of myself with a caption and then I posted a tweet style post because it's easy and it's, it's comfortable. Is that element of like the variety needs to come about from also as well, like, okay, we need to actually come up with new ideas. We can't just keep doing the same things over and over again. We can't just keep posting the same style of content and expect something different to come in. We're going to need to adapt and evolve with the content. Like Mike said about that guy that I follow, he's called the People's Pundit, those who want to follow him. There's no variety to the content. It's like once you've seen some of the stuff, it's like, okay, cool. I've seen it. It doesn't really, there's no levels to it, right? And actually some of the other, some of the bits that I've watched recently, I'm like, actually it's not as funny anymore. Blah, blah, blah. It was funny at the time. And you've always got to adapt and evolve with what you're doing. Like we, I like to think we do this and we have done this over time as we're constantly thinking, right, how can we add this in? How can we make this a bit different? How can we change it? And I think when coaches come in, they just want me to tell them to keep doing what they're doing and be safe with it. It's like, no, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to be more opinionated. You've got to, we'll show you how to do that. We'll show you how to make opinionated carousels. Because I think what, if you said that to coaches, I just think that they're going to go, oh, okay, I already do carousels. Cool. I already do that. I already do that. It's, no, you think you do. You don't do it properly. Mm. You're just doing the safe thing of, here's three ways you can get more protein in your diet. Boring. Like Mike just said there about that carousel, three things I changed with all my clients this January it meant that they lost an average nine pounds in four weeks is more interesting right? And it shows that you're good at your job. It shows you more social proof. So I think there's definitely an element of this where the variety thing needs to come out where if you come into coaching one-on-one -on -one, is that you can't just keep posting the same shit content you've been posting. Like you've got to upskill, you've got to level up, you've got to change what you're doing as well as increase the variety of it, which again can seem daunting. But once you find your own way of doing it, it's a little bit, a little bit easier. And then I like say point three is just that it looks garbage. So again, it leads on from a little bit of the variety, a little bit of that, but is that it is just a case of coaches, I think go, oh, that'll do. There's very much a that'll do mentality with it of uh, for coaches. Oh, I better just get it out. That'll do. Will it though? Yeah, I think um, we're not big on comparing to other coaches when it comes to like type of content or like information that's within content. So like we would always tell the people that we work with, don't copy or even to some degree take inspiration from other people's content instead think of the things that you would want to say and say that so we're not big fans of the whole like looking over the garden fence and going oh maybe i should do these recipe videos or maybe i should do this video with the five pounds of fat that's not what we like but when it comes to just picking out 10 random accounts and going okay well where does your sit in terms of visibility what does it look like in terms of variety in terms of branding in terms of the editing looking quite good in terms of the camera work that's been set up in nice lighting in terms of the audio being decent and if you're not in the top one or two why not like if you can quite comfortably say yeah my stuff doesn't look as good as other people's what impression does that give to your potential leads or your customers that you don't put as much attention in, that it's not as, you know, grabbing as well, um, that it's not as easy to watch or as easy to listen to. So again, you're reducing the likelihood that somebody's going to feel that no like and trust and pick you. Because that's something that's really easy to, to upskill in and manageable. Look, I'm not the best at, um, at Canva work, but I can make my page look half decent. Like, it looks well-branded, it looks but thrown together nice. Also with that, though, I think that you're doing yourself a disservice there because you may not know the advanced intricacies of Canva, but I actually think that's the thing coaches do wrong, is that they try and make it too flashy. Yeah. I actually think there's an element to it where the neatness of just black on white with a with a splash of the logo, yeah. and it's the opinionated piece, looks decent. Yeah. It's, this isn't about your trickery and your knowledge level. It's not necessarily like how you can do fancy edits. Yeah. It's, does it look crisp? 
Does it look clean? Yeah. Because I think that's the thing. I've seen people fanning around with Canva and they've got four oh, yeah. different colours on there. They just it's, a, it's an assault on the eyes. And, they, and I'm like, you, and they've got like the the, the, the the grayscale in the back of a guy like doing this, yeah, and, and then like the big bold like, and it's like too much. And, and then yeah, and, and then it like you swipe through and like half of the image is on one side and onto yeah. the next. It's, and, and it's not even them, it's a random stock image of someone. Yeah. And I don't like that. I think it no, should I be don't. you, it should be your pictures. And if you don't have a picture of you, don't use one then. Yeah. Like it should be clear then branded that it's you. I don't like, if I'm scrolling on your Instagram, I see someone else's face, it's not a client and it's not clearly your client. I'm like, what, what's that about? It's, it's a bit weird. So there's an element of it where like the garbage side of it is more like, I prefer, me might prefer a clean cut, looks decent, not not in your face, not, it doesn't have to be that way. Same with editing. I don't think it needs to be over-edited. It just needs to be crisp. Um, and I think the, the point you made there about not comparing yourself is that I wouldn't compare to anyone in fitness. We're talking about who do you follow? Find 10 accounts that you follow outside of fitness that you like and where do you stack in that? Because what you'll find is the accounts that you follow and that you like, it is crisp. The audio is good. They do have a variety of content. If you, if you look at other people you follow in, on, on, in terms of fitness, you go on that comparison route and all that sort of stuff. Whenever I say compare yourself to accounts, I'm sure this is, Mike's is the same thing. So go find people that you like on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go find people you like on Instagram. Outside of fitness, bring up their accounts and show me it. Look at them. Where would you sit on that scale? Well, I'm bottom. I'm at 10 out of 10. I'm at a 10th out of all those. Exactly. That's why you follow those people though. It's because they're that good. You, like Mike said, it's something that you can learn. You can upskill in that. That's in your control. Like, you know, we talked before, previous videos about leads coming to you and you can't control necessarily the, the speed at which they join you, you can control this. Yeah. You can control how good your camera quality is, your lighting, the sound. Literally. You can redo a video that sounds shit, that looks shit, that's done in, in, in the wrong format. You can redo that. Coaches just don't. They just go, oh, that'll do, and they put it up. Without realizing that's an impression that you made on someone then that can't be undone of, oh, they don't really care. Bit slapdash, bit yeah. sloppy. I think that's the important thing to remember is like, it's not just about whether your canvas look really, really flashy, it's about going, does it stand out? Is it clean? Is it, is it, does it look like time and effort has gone into it? Yeah, absolutely. The next one is copied or templated content. Okay. Because it links in with that a little bit in that sense that coaches do go for Canva templates. Oh, I downloaded this hundred pack of Canva templates. Great, so did another thousand coaches and now you all look the same. Yeah. It comes back to the same point is that our Twitter style one isn't the, isn't the Twitter style Canva template. It's our own one that we made. Yeah. It looks a little bit different. It's not exactly the same. It looks somewhat similar. But it's done in our way with our font, yeah. our face on it. There's little things that we've done and our added color to, way. to make it our colors. Same with the carousels. It's like, it's done. You can tell it's ours. The, the titles we use, the font we use, it's all ours throughout everything. It's not randomly different on different posts. It's not, we do it for, for nine posts, then we change font or change color. Like I see coaches all the time. Yeah. Like change color nine posts later. I'm like, why are you fucking changing Madness. colors? It's crazy. So like, and that comes from that copied and templated content. It comes from either trying to use AI, which again is stupid, um, trying to create content ideas uh, and caption, sorry. But it's that copied and templated. So they, they see someone else doing it, you know, putting the water in the cups and going, this is your seven days of the week. This is what happening is that you're, being... okay, I get it. The overflowing water and I put it on weight. Great, I get it. You've just copied that off someone else because you've seen someone else do it. Come up with your own ways of doing it. I think that's the, the key thing with that and the templates and stuff like that. It just winds us up. Yeah, like it, it might be what you think that you need because as coaches, you probably got into this industry because you enjoyed coaching to some degree and that maybe content might take you a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit um, more time to kind of learn and to find your voice and so on. And that's fine. Um, it happens. And I can see the appeal of going, oh, we've got these templated things and we've got this and we've got all the captions and we've got this and it makes it really easy. I can see the appeal. And that's why they do it because it is appealing but you're solving the incorrect problem. You're solving the problem of, oh, I don't know what to do. And you're, the remedy is, it's all given to you. That's not the remedy that's going to work. The remedy is, learn how to do it for yourself. Because then you've got it forever. So you build the skills and the traits that in four years time, you know how to write a hook, that you know how to write copy, that you know to um, create emotion within your, within your CTAs that you know how to script a video, that you know how to set up the lighting, that you know how to brand it, that you have the skills and traits that then last your career as opposed to just taking the easy route there and then and going, oh yeah, I'll do that and it looks good. Okay, yeah, it might look good, but also so does everybody else's and you're not finding your voice, voice and actually you're doing the worst thing that you can possibly do in marketing, which is do the same things as your competitors. Mm -hmm. You should be doing things differently. If you look at us, 
if you if you blurred our faces out and you saw our content in our style, in our voice, with how it looks and how different it is, you would know it's us. If you read a piece of copy from us without our names on it, you would probably know it's ours. Now, you imagine every mentor doing the same thing. Would you then have faith in that mentor? If you see the exact same caption, the exact same video, the exact same branding between us, the next person, next person, next person, you wouldn't know who to believe, what to trust, what to do. But that's effectively what you're doing. Instead, what we've done is we've found our own voice, our own style, we've developed on that over the years. And because of that, that's why maybe you're A, watching this video, B, in the members group, C, a one-to-one client. That's, that's why you're here, right? If it was the same as everything else, you wouldn't be here. So let's deviate away from this templated stuff because we see it all the time. Dan showed me one this morning. Look at this. Tell me it's not templated without telling me it's templated. It, it was just like, if you want to lose X amount in this amount of days, if you want... Um, the Un- it, Unshakable confidence yeah. to feel the most powerful you ever felt in 90 days. It's all the same buzzwords, the same keywords that just lose its effect. Like, that might, that, that might have worked well 10 years ago, like, literally. It doesn't work well anymore. So let's start to do the thing that actually will stand the test of time. Yes, it might take you a little bit longer to develop that craft, but once you've got it, you've got it. I I find it funny with the mentors as well, is that I imagine if they were given templated content by their mentor or someone that was advising them, they'd be like, no way, I'm just being the same as everyone else. It's just funny how they they give it out. It just, again, it's just that pain point. They know know how to make money. Like just just be wiser than that and, and, and stand up. Stand up against it. So again, the last point then is no niche slash personal personality is the next <laughs> niche and personality, personality is the next one. And it kind of links into what we just said, right? Is that I think it's really important that you find your way of doing this and your way of making content by putting your personality into it alongside your niche, obviously. But I we believe as well a huge part of your niche is your personality. That's kind of like they're they're one and the same thing. But it's worth remembering that the content that you create and how you create it with bags of personality in, in it. A, can't be copied, and B, is unique to you. And like Mike said, you've got the skills then to vary your content up in the future if that gets a little bit boring or it gets, you know, it gets a little bit stale. Um, and you always know how you can push it on and how you can develop your content if you put loads of your personality into it. Our content is heavily influenced by the office and our style of humour and the way that we like to do things. Same with our videos. Again, like with our videos, like Mike does the character-based thing and I do the more behind-the-scenes voice. I genuinely don't think it would work the same if it was the other way around. Just, I just don't think it would. I just don't think that our style of comedy would work if it was the way around. I just don't think it would it would have the same effect, right? So um, it's important to remember that within your content as well. It's not trying to force something that's not you. I'm not trying to force a piece of content because you think, oh, so-and-so does it, so I'll do it that way. Try and think about what you like to do, how you like to do things. And believe us when we say that you can create your content that way and it can pay off and it can work really, really well rather than, like Mike said, looking at ours and going, oh, I'm going to do that with a mate and I'm going to pretend to be a business mentor. It's like, it's not going to work for you. Like, it's not going to work for you. I've seen it before with clients where I've recommended they do skits because I'm like, you're quite funny and I think this video of yours did quite well. I think, and they're like, oh my God, I love doing those. I'd love to just keep doing that. Okay, wicked. There's your style of spoof video that you're going to do. I've seen other people do spoof videos of, Eddie Abu, for example, and they do that and they go down that route of like just saying this is shit guys, this is shit guys, whatever. And that'll work for a period of time because obviously he's bigger than him, but that hasn't got longevity, but it's their way of doing it and it's the how they want to do it because they put their personality into it and it can, again touches on their niche to a degree as well. And it's just important to remember that. I think it's it's there's it's just so much of it lacking in 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 content in from from coaches. Yeah, like again, I think it's I don't know, maybe a lack of creativity. I think it's maybe, I think part of it's it... It's fear of standing out is, is definitely part of it. It's fear of making something people either won't like or they I think, won't get engagement. I think part, yeah, I think part of it is that uniform of being an online coach. I think it's, okay, now I'm an online coach. What content do online coaches make? Mm-hmm. Like, and when you're coming in to become an online coach, you start to look around that, okay, other people, so this is what people make. This is the content that people make. All right, okay, let's make, make it like that. But you need to develop your own style and your own pattern. Like Dan just said there, we're influenced by The Office. So that influences the way that we do our spoof videos. So you've got the kind of desperate um, jokes on him character who actually thinks he's pretty cool or pretty slick or like that he, he knows everything. The jokes on him, like David Brent. If any other mentor made posts like that or videos like that, it wouldn't look right because it's not them. That is us. And when the cameras are off, we'll just quote the office to one another. And that's how we act. So that's why it bleeds into our content. So then because of that, the people that like that personality or they they like that sense of humour, then they, um, was it on this video? Yeah, 
we're, we're filming back to back. Yeah, it it lends itself to that if they've watched a couple of those, then they might click on one of the the videos that's a bit more um, informative and go, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense, mm-hmm. because of how we've done it. Because coaches just don't have that. So with your niche and with your personal brand, you need to ha- have a real clear idea of who you work with and why you're the best coach for them. And your Instagram needs to do a job of conveying the two. So if you think about it, that's the only job that your Instagram needs to do because that's your marketing tool. So if it does a really stellar job of going, here's who I work with and here's why I'm the best, over time, how can that fail? So if you look at what we do, it's who do we work with? It's online coaches who want to be better at online coaching, who want to build a business, that they want to improve their sales, blah, blah, blah. And why are we the best at what we do? Well, we do everything one-to-one and bespoke. We track data with you that other people don't track. We um, book in calls and video uh, updates every single month personally. We don't palm you off to a success or a performance coach. That we don't just tell you to send hundreds of call DMs. That we're not going to charge you up front. We're not going to encourage you to take a credit card out. We're not going to tie you into a contract. And on top of that, our personality, we've put our personality out there for you to like it for you to enjoy it, for you to, if you get on with our values, our opinions, our sense of humor, that's what could then probably connect us and make us the best coach for you. That's what we do, okay? And that's why you might select us over somebody else. And we, like, how I will say this is, you kind of know what you're going to get when you join us, right? So when you join us, you probably know it's going to be one-to-one because we talk about it enough. You probably know that we're going to use the tracking spreadsheet because you've probably seen them enough. You probably know that we're not going to tell you to spam and call DM and charge up front because we've spoken about it enough. You probably know that we're quite personable, that we will chat to you like a human and and have conversation with you because our content comes across that way. So you get a good idea and indication even through our content of what it might be like to work with us. I don't see any coaches doing that. When people view your content, do they know what they're going to get when they work with you? Do they know what your training plans look like? Do they know what your online coaching looks like? Do they know how you do your check-ins? Do they know what um, those check-ins involve? Do they know that there's how many touch points that there are? Like, do they know what they're going to get? Or is it just the same content as everybody else, where it's you in the gym with a motivational quote, or whether it's you waving five pounds of fat? Does it tell you anything different to what the other coaches are doing? I don't think it does. That's why niching down and personally branding it and demonstrating why you're the best coach for your client, that's what you need to be getting across on Instagram. The reason the coaches don't post that is because it doesn't get engagement. And that is the only reason they do it is because they don't believe that anything other than engagement is useful in their business. And like Mike just said, they're showing them all that stuff. It's not going to get engagement, but it will make them go, I want to work with this guy. And there's no like button for that. There's no engagement button for that. But it will take you further down the line. Because again, like we just said, believe us, there are people who've got hundreds of thousands of followers who can't get a client. Like they're getting less clients. Less clients than some people. I've got some clients that have got two and a half thousand, three thousand followers that are earning far more money than those that have got a quarter of a million. I've seen it. I've seen it. Like, and, and, it's, and it's due to, to that element of you know what you're going to get when you sign up. You know you're going to get a result. You know what the checking process looks like. Stop chasing the engagement startups part of that and you need to play the longer term game and know that posting that content makes people go, this is what I'm going to get. It's almost like a, going to buy a car, right? And then them not showing you any of the inside. No, trust us. No, just the outside. Just trust us. It's fine in there. It's fine. In, it, looks, it looks fine in there. You wouldn't buy it. If they wouldn't let you sit in it, they wouldn't let you put your hand on the steering wheel, wouldn't let you sit in the car, you wouldn't fucking buy it. It wouldn't happen. Start thinking about just because it doesn't get engagement isn't the most important bit of your, of your content. I think that's a, a huge part of it that, um, that, is, that is missing. Anyway. They're the five mistakes that uh, coaches make with Instagram. There you go. Uh, so if make you sure you stop, it, stop doing them. Stop making those mistakes. If you found any value from that at all, we would love it if you could just like and subscribe if you don't already. Yeah, we need we need as much as we can get with that, I think. It's looking looking very low on the subscriber count. Sparse, though. isn't it? Only three and a half. Only three and a half thousand, I think. Is it three, three and a half? Two. It is three going point, up, isn't it? Three point two, I think, something like that, yeah. Oh, cheers, guys. Um, let's get it to four and absolutely nothing else will happen. So. <laughs>